Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Uh, welcome to another edition of the show. Today we've got kind of uh, the sad show. Uh, we hate doing these uh, particular programs, but uh, we lost another great one this morning. Lee Kearslake, longtime drummer from Uriah Heap, also with Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz and all sorts of other projects, uh, left us at the age of 73 due to an uh, ongoing battle that he had for many years with prostate cancer. So Lee is up there amongst the gods, and, uh, you know, we're going to miss him. Uh, this is a guy, a really, really good drummer, also a great backing vocalist and song arranger and songwriter. I mean, he's uh, his contributions to the hard rock and metal world uh, pretty, pretty great. So born 1947, April the 16th. He leaves us on September 19th, 2020, uh, originally from... Uh, Winton, Bournemouth, Dorset, England. Hope I'm saying all that correctly. So, you know, Lee kind of got his start, uh, you know, pre-Uriah Heap with a bunch of interesting bands. So he uh, played alongside other future Uriah Heap members in acts such as uh, The Gods, okay, appeared on their couple of albums, all right, more kind of like a psychedelic early prog and pop band. Uh, he was along with... Um, Ken Hensley appeared in the kind of little blues rock supergroup Tofat. Can't really call him much of a supergroup at the time, but looking back on it, kind of a supergroup because you had guys like, uh, you know, Cliff Bennett in the band, Ken Hensley, John Conus, Lee Kearslake. All right, you had John Gustafson later on. So, you know, kind of a cool little blues rock band with one of the all time weirdest covers ever. Thanks, Hypnosis. Uh, also appeared on the. Uh, with this band Head Machine, again, kind of an offshoot of Tofat, kind of the precursor to Uriah Heep. Really good stuff if you haven't heard any of these albums. Uh, of course, you know, then he joins Uriah Heep a few albums into their career. So he doesn't appear on the uh, the first three albums, but he joins just in time for when the band is just starting to really hit their stride with albums like Demons and Wizard. Okay, The Magician's Birthday. Okay, we got the Killer Live album, which uh, this is like an interesting uh, topic to bring up because here uh, he's playing on some of these songs that had various other drummers performing on from the first three albums and really killing it. Here to hear Lee with his really, really heavy hand. I mean, he was a very powerful drummer, but also kind of a lyrical drummer, right? So here, you know, he's playing on songs like uh, Gypsy and Look at Yourself, you know, from the from the early albums, really killing it hitting some thunderous thunderous drum passages a uh, great live album uh, and then you know you've got like sweet freedom i mean he played on a lot of right heap albums wonder world okay additional other albums throughout the 70s and then the big comeback album in the early 80s with abominog with the brand new lineup okay also you know in the 80s i mean the 90s uh see a light and a bunch of other albums in the 90s. He would eventually retire from the band, you know, roughly, or I think it's right around uh, 2007 or so, uh, you know, due to, you know, getting up there in age due to lots of health concerns. You know, he had arthritis and psoriasis, uh, and then, of course, he developed the cancer later on. So he's been, you know, pretty ill, not in the greatest health for quite a while, but really positive attitude if you read any of the kind of interviews with Lee over the last bunch of years. I mean, he always is like, you know what? My doctor told me I had X months to live. It's now two, three years into this. I'm going to kick this. I'm going to kick this. And, uh, you know, obviously he did last a while, but uh, he left this this morning. Other things he's appeared on. So he also uh, played on his... Uh, bandmate Ken Hensley's solo album. Really good one. Proud Words on a Dusty Shelf. Some of those Ken, Hen Ken Hensley albums are pretty damn good. But, you know, he's probably, for a lot of people, most known for being in that original lineup of Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz. Okay, those two albums. So you got the Blizzard of Oz album, as well as Diary of a Madman. So, I mean, you know the history, right? So Ozzy leaves Black Sabbath, forms this band with ex-Quiet Riot guitar player Randy Rhodes as well as former Uriah Heap drummer Lee Kearslake, former Rainbow, and a bunch of other band bassist Bob Daisley. So Lee and Bob basically like co-write much of the material 
on these albums, okay, or help, you know, co-write them and help with the arrangements and all that sort of thing. So they go out, they do the European tours to support the first album, and then uh, they start, you know, Bob and Lee start asking for more of the moolah from the, you know, the songwriting and all that kind of stuff. Well, Ozzy and Sharon kind of took a fence at that and, you know, kicked them out of the band, brought in Ruzi Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge. So for the, for the U.S. tour of Blizzard of Oz, that's who we saw obviously on stage but meanwhile all of the by that time all diary of Man Man already recorded so you have these two albums in the can you know with great help on the arranging and the songwriting from daisley and kears lake as well as the bass and drums and basically the general public was led to believe like these guys you know never had a part in any of that <clears throat> which of course bob and lee fought for many many years in fact, one of Lee's wishes in recent years, it's like, you know what, before I die, please, I just want to receive the platinum albums for th that I should have gotten, because both of these albums went multi-platinum, right? I just, I just want my platinum album for both of them. And he actually, in the last, I think, year and a half or so, was finally given the platinum albums he deserved for his part in both of these albums. But, you know, who can... Uh, you know, over the mountain. I mean, come on. It's like you you listen to his rumbling drums to kick off the Diary of the Mad Men song, Over the Mountain. It's, that's pure Lee Cares like right there. Uh, and so many great performances, you know, like uh, Suicide Solution. I mean, his, his drum work all over these albums. And when you go back and you listen to, you know, these two albums and, you know, Demons and Wizards and The Magician's Birthday and, you know, some of these, you know, even Abominog and stuff. This is a really talented, heavy-hitting drummer who has really like put his stamp on so many great heavy rock staples of the last, you know, about 50 years or close to it, right? So, uh, yeah, a sad loss. And I, I never personally met Lee, but uh, I have spoken to people who have, who say he was one of the nicest guys in the industry and a guy that everybody has been pulling for the last couple of years. So to kind of wake up this morning uh, to see, you know, that uh, that note that he had passed, kind of sad. I think we all knew it was coming, but um, doesn't make it any less, you know, easy to swallow. So uh, Lee Kerslake, gone from us at the age of uh, 73, uh, passes away due to complications from prostate cancer at... Uh, the age of 73, September 19, 2020. So, Lee, I know you're up there playing all the greats, right? And uh, there's probably going to be a lot of that going on. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. So, Lee Cares Lake, we're going to miss you. Rest in peace. And uh, it lets everybody listen to some classic Uriah Heep, Blizzard of Oz, whatever it is. Um, celebrate the career and the life of Lee Cares Lake today. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Remember, if you like what you see here, please hit the Ko-Fi or Ko-Fi link in the description. Buy us a coffee or a cup of tea. Uh, we'd be greatly appreciated. Let those ads run. And also, another way to support the channel, buy some merch. We've got links to our Ko-Fi page as well as the uh, merchandise page. So get yourself a uh, T-shirt, a mug, a, a hoodie, a hat, a sticker, whatever you like. we got a couple different designs up there, um, you know multiple ways you can support the channel so we thank everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you real soon rest in peace lee take care bye-bye